really important demonstrations tomorrow. Um, one is um, at 8 o'clock in the morning outside the Home Office. People are protesting and all people of conscience. Um, all people of conscience are coming out and protesting against the Rwanda Act and the, and the attempt to deport people to Rwanda and our friends at the City of Sanctuary and many of the migra migrant and refugee organisations have organised a demo at uh, outside the Home Office building which is Vulcan House on Mill Sand. So if you can get along there between any time between 8 and 10 in the morning that would be great to show solidarity. Um, and, and then the second thing is I know many people here will have already been to the student encampment as far as I know, there are now 16 universities in the UK with Solidarity Camp, which is amazing, amazing. I mean, so much inspiration um, from the students across the states, but also in other countries where it's really difficult to set up a Solidarity Camp. The, the latest thing I saw was that the Free University of Berlin has set up a camp and we know the repression of the police in, in Germany against any attempt to act in solidarity with the Palestinian people. So that's fantastic. But here in the UK, I think there are plans for another 10 or so over the coming days, uh, uh, another 10 or so universities. So watch out and support them where you can. And when if you go and visit another town or city, look out and see if there's a camp there. And if there is, go and visit it. For anyone that isn't familiar with Sheffield University, I mean, they, it's important to know that the protest is students and staff and alumni united together. So this is about Hallam University and its complicity as well. But the the camp is actually outside the Students' Union building, the concourse, next to the Octagon um, Centre. And it's the, the um, so it, it's opposite the main building, but it's uh, just below the A57 Western Bank as the road goes up to Broom Hill. So if you're on that road and you're not familiar, the camp is actually below the dual carriageway on a pedestrianised concourse. Um, but tomorrow at 12 o'clock, for those people that can be there, I know many people will be working, but 12 o'clock tomorrow, we have called the Sheffield Palestine Solidarity Campaign and the Coalition Against Israeli Apartheid has called a demonstration at the Students' Union, 12 o'clock tomorrow, and it's really important that as many of you as possible are there. We know that the Vice-Chancellor of Sheffield University has so far attempted to ignore the, the call of the students to end complicity. And the, and the Vice-Chancellor needs to get the message from the people of Sheffield, not just the students, not just the staff, but from, from the people of Sheffield that we are bothered about what our un the universities in our city are doing. And we are bothered that the Sheffield University is complicit in the genocide of the Palestinian people. So we want to be there tomorrow to send a message to the Vice-Chancellor and to send a message of solidarity to the students. So if you possibly can get there tomorrow at 12 o'clock, please be, be with us and be with us supporting the students. If you can get lunch out from work a bit early and come over at that time, that would be fantastic. Um, I, I think somebody else is gonna speak about, about the coming events over the next few days. I mean, the other thing I wanted to say, I'm holding a placard about Barclays, Barclays Bank, and a new report has come out today, uh, co-published by the Palestine Solidarity Campaign and War on Want and Campaign Against the Arms Trade, saying that Barclays Bank's complicity in Israel's genocide has increased over the last six months. So we've had a number of...
We've had a number of protests outside Barclays Bank and the pressure on Barclays Bank is building. They issued a statement the other day trying to distance themselves from their complicity, full of lies and misinformation. So we know that the pressure is working. Um, so we're going to carry on building, building that campaign and if you do happen still to accidentally have an account with Barclays or you have friends and family that do, then tell them to change their bank net right now and to tell Barclays why they're doing it. So, to summarise, 8 o'clock tomorrow morning if you can protest against the Rwanda deportations outside Vulcan House and 12 o'clock tomorrow at the University Concourse. Thanks. Um, I'm going to build up to announcing a really important event on Saturday, but I want to preface it by saying, oh, thank you, by saying a few words about what's happening currently in Rafa. Uh, Rafa is the tip of an iceberg. What we've seen from the north to the south of Gaza is culminating in Rafa. We've seen the slaughter in the West Bank as well. We've seen over 7,000 people arrested, being made captives, uh, the equivalent of hostages in the West Bank, but never called that by our media. All of this, the horror of Rafa, the horror of what's being done from the north to the south of Gaza, the horror of what's being done in the West Bank and in East Jerusalem, is the grotesquely logical outcome of a process called the Nakba, with which we are all familiar. We are approaching what's commemorated as Nakba Day on May the 15th. Uh, people say that the Nakba was in 1948. The Nakba started at the beginning of the 20th century, as soon as the Zionists started to try to move into Palestine and get the land. And one of their first moves when they bought some land was to get rid of the Palestinians off the land. Shame. And that process, that process escalated and escalated. And under the British mandate, the British mandate from the 1920s to 48, to Britain's eternal shame, Zionist militias were trained and equipped to sweep through Palestine between 47 and 49, laying waste to the villagers. This is the event that we're commemorating this Saturday in our Nakba rally. And it's really important that we commemorate what is probably the most important day in the Palestine Solidarity um, calendar. And as we commemorate the Nakba, the ethnic cleansing, the settler colonial project that's designed to take the land and get rid of the Palestinians, we remember the central right of the Palestinians, which is the right of return. That, yes. that right is enshrined in UN Resolution 194. It's been reaffirmed every year since it was established, and we must never forget the right of return. It's the central demand. It's what all, Lena's nodding, she holds that right dear, to her heart, as do all Palestinians. So please, please turn up on Saturday at Encliffe Park. The march will leave very promptly at 11 o'clock. So don't be late or else you'll be running to catch up with us. But please turn up in your numbers and march with us to commemorate the Nakba and to call for the right of return. And also, importantly, we want it to be a march and a rally for everybody. So beforehand in Enfield Park, there will be some children's activities for an hour before, and we hope that the children will come with us to on the march and into the town centre. Everybody is welcome on this, uh, on this rally. And during and after the rally, there are further family activities happening in the Peace Gardens. It's a special day, and it's a day when we can all of us join together and commemorate the most important day in the Palestinian calendar. And remember, everything we are seeing today is the grotesquely logical conclusion of the Zionist settler colonial project 
So we must make this rally on the 11th a good big rally. Thank you. This is Alex. Yes, that's what the field is on Saturday. Free, free! Palestine! Free, free! Palestine! Shepherd, let me have the anger in your voices. Free, free! Palestine! Aid. If Israel had agreed to a ceasefire today, the hostages would have been freed. Instead, Netanyahu chose to bomb Rafa. Israel does not want a ceasefire. Israel does not want to free the hostages. It wants to murder every last Palestinian so it can occupy the land. Shame! Shame. Shame. Do you all understand what it means to say the occupation forces took over the Rafah crossing? They've sealed the only outlet for Palestinians to survive. The cage is completely sealed. This is what you do when you're about to scorch the earth and annihilate an entire, entire population. Shame on the world. Shame on everyone who's still indifferent to the genocide in Gaza. Wake up! One holocaust does not justify another. Never again means never again, full stop. Shame on our media and politicians turning a blind eye, peddling Israeli lies and still not uttering the words massacre, genocide or ethnic cleansing. We the people are wide awake and can see over the last seven months and indeed over the decades prior how Israeli narratives and viewpoints dominate the Middle Eastern output of our mainstream media in England. It silences and dehumanizes all of Palestinians. Western media organization and journalists working for them have struggled for decades to cover the Israeli-Palestine conflict, so-called conflict, and it can't do so accurately or impartially. Right now in Gaza, nobody can travel or evacuate out of uh, anymore. Palestinian children lie under the rubble of their homes that have been bombed by the murderous occupation. Shame! Shame! Shame. Aid workers have left Gaza in tears knowing the fate of those they leave behind. This is what this disgusting world is allowing. Palestinian children crushed under the rubble of their own homes night after night. Their little faces and arms hanging over the edge of crushed buildings, lifeless. Entire families across generations have given their last breaths in this genocide. Whole bloodlines wiped off from the civil registry. Just as apartheid in South Africa was dismantled by the people, not the politicians, so too will the apartheid in Israel be brought to an end. Woo! Palestine has endured the worst, yet they persist. Free, free! Palestine! Free, free! Palestine! When you think back to when this assault started, two million Palestinians have been displaced and they were told to move to Rafah in order to stay safe. And now the Israeli government have made clear their intentions to drive them out of Rafah, possibly into Egypt. They have nowhere to go. These people have nowhere to go to be safe at the moment. So it's so important that tonight, across the country, there's a demonstration happening in Downing Street right now, outside Downing Street. Towns and cities across the country, people are coming out like you to say, we are not going to go away. The eyes of the world are on what's happening in Rafa, and these protests that have been going and building since October, we are not going to go away. Even if they do clear Rafa, we will keep campaigning for justice for Pal the Palestinian people. It is so high. I have never known an issue to cut through society, not since the miners' strike 40 years ago, has an issue cut right through the body politic. It is high on the political agenda. People are casting their votes according to what people are telling them their attitude to a ceasefire is. And we must make sure that Gaza, Palestine and justice for the Palestinian people stays as high on the political agenda as it is now. Because this won't end. This didn't start on October the 7th and it won't end if there is a ceasefire in Gaza now. Yeah. It won't end until Palestine is rebuilt, Gaza is rebuilt and we see justice for the Palestinian people. So we've got to keep up that work. You've got to keep up that work. You've got to talk to your work colleagues. You've got to bring them out. We're bringing people out again and again and again. And we've got to just keep our efforts high, redouble our efforts, bring work colleagues along to protests like this. You've got a protest on Saturday. And then the following Saturday, there is our 14th national demonstration. Our 14th national demonstration. And they are all 
well over 150,000, 200,000 people. If you'd said to me a year ago, every few weeks you could get over 100,000 people on the streets of London, I wouldn't have believed you. But it shows how much people care and how determined people are on this question. So well done for coming out. Let's keep up our efforts until we see justice for the Palestinian people. Thank you very much. Free, free! Palestine! Free, free! Palestine! Free, free! Palestine! Free, free. Our message to Zionists unchanged. Our resolve unhindered. Will you please, please now stop? You have exerted your egoistic might. Bullies in a paid playground orchestrating an unjust fight. Palestinian land has been flattened. Any hope of return crippled. Mass destruction, disproportionate annihilation. The world shocked, yet no just arbitration. Will you please, please now stop? All food sources demolished. Hospitals, schools, places of worship patiently obliterated. Means of survival cindered. So, so forms of healing tinted, sources of soul nourishment blown up in collective punishment, belongings of the Palestinians homeless, one treasured, once treasured deeply, now rendered worthless, memories, identities wiped out, brutally cleansed out of sight for eternity, generations lost no semblance of prosperity. Will you please now stop? Think about the dead, the beautiful innocent people who in their tens of thousands fled. A child in Gaza killed every 10 minutes. Genocidal evil with no limits. Toys, pictures, heirlooms, dreams mangled in the rubble. While Zionist sensitivities protected in a bubble. Will you please, please now stop for us and them and humanity and the insanity. Until then, until then we will keep marching, we will keep rallying our solidarity with Palestinians unquenched. We are not begging. Free, free! Palestine! Free, free! Palestine!